As I begin the video, a near collision with an ignorant gang stalker. It just doesn't stop. Hi, it's your host, E.I. Smith. And it is Sunday, April 14th, 2019. And it is 9.43 p.m. I am in Sunny Isles Beach, Florida. One of my favorite cities in South Florida to visit because of the stunning architecture and its proximity to the beach. The beach is just on the other side of that walkway there. And because it's so close to the beach, it sits right on the water. There's always a nice cool breeze that passes through. That's one of the that's one of the gang stalkers favorite tactics right there is obstructing your movement with vehicles and boy I tell you it's something else so I'm here in Sunny Isles Beach Florida I'm in the process of recording new gang stalking videos because as I was clearing space in my Google Drive account I mistakenly deleted all of my gang stalking in action videos and by the time I had realized what I had done it was too late because I had already cleared the trash in my Google Drive account as well. The only original video I was able to save was Gang Stalking in Action Part 5, which was filmed in Hallandale Beach, Florida. And the only reason I was even able to get that is because I had saved it to my Microsoft OneDrive account and stumbled across it by mistake. So I was able to save one of the originals and that makes me happy. But I'm just sick over the loss of the other 11 videos because of the time and effort it takes to make them. However, gang stalking does not change. It's ever pervasive and it's not as if I'm not going to find other instances of gang stalking against my person anyways. So I'll just make new videos. Gang stalking is a joint effort between governmental federal law enforcement, semi-law enforcement, various corporations, and churches. It alleges to be in the interest of national security, but it ain't nothing but Young Turk tactics from the Communist Revolution in 1917. Third Reich tactics from Nazi Germany. KGB tactics from the USSR and Soviet Russia. COINTEL PRO tactics which can be observed and studied on the FBI's official website 
tactics that were used against dissident groups in the 1960s and 70s. Don't let me forget Ku Klux Klan tactics from the Jim Crow South of the 1920s and 30s. MK Ultra tactics from the 1960s and 70s. MK Ultra can be observed and researched on the CIA official website. It's a combination of all of these draconian programs with the sole purpose of disrupting the lives of select U.S. citizens. I've talked at some length as to how a person can get placed into gang stalking. And I'll briefly sum it up. It's something that a person is placed in by federal law enforcement agencies. Okay, your local police can't put you in a gang stalking program. Your local sheriff's department cannot put you in a gang stalking program. It's something that is done at the federal level. So you can get placed in the gang stalking at the recommendation of certain elements in the CIA, certain elements in the FBI, certain elements in the US Marshals, certain elements in the Drug Enforcement Agency, certain elements in the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives. And you see where I'm going with this. These are federal law enforcement agencies. Okay, these are the kinds of law enforcement agencies that do man hunts and try and find and apprehend terrorists. Now, why would one of these agencies that I've named recommend somebody for gang stalking? Well, there's a number of reasons. If you're a loner, you can be recommended for gang stalking as a lone wolf terrorist that constantly needs to be watched. You can be put into gang stalking if you have a extremely messy divorce and that is the men that have to watch out when those messy divorces happen because it's the men that are put into gang stalking campaigns. You can get put into a gang stalking campaign for being a whistleblower. If you, br if you blow the whistle on an organization for being corrupt, You can get put into gang stalking. Why? Because that leads us to the next reason that you can get put into gang stalking for making the wrong enemy. If you blow the whistle on a corrupt organization, you likely make enemies, especially if the corruption was making people money. You can get put into a gang stalking campaign if you have an inheritance. Meaning you are the beneficiary on someone's last will and testament. I found out in October of 2018 that I was a beneficiary. And that I have an inheritance that was left to me by my grandmother via my late grandfather. And my grandmother is still alive and is in good health for a woman that is ninety two years old. Another way you can get put into gang stalking is if a federal law enforcement agency just finds you peculiar and a potential threat to national security. How could a person be labeled peculiar? Well, your entire life is looked at and analyzed. And if 
the way your life has gone up to the time that you get put into a gang stalking campaign fits the description or fits the narrative or fits the pattern of the lives of former terrorists then you could get put into a gang stalking campaign And gang stalking campaigns are nothing but harassment and disruption campaigns. And your space is constantly being obstructed by people and vehicles of all kinds. And you are constantly running into instigated and derived situations that lead to negative police interactions. But mind you, local police are not handlers in this thing and they are not movers and shakers in this thing. They're simply the people that the gang stalkers call on cue to try and get you into legal trouble. Whether or not you have a criminal record. I'm 33 years old at the present time. I have no criminal record whatsoever. But via the gang stalking mechanism, there are evil forces out there right now actively trying to give me one. And I'll do the best I possibly can to keep a clean slate. Because the last thing I need is to give these gang stalkers any more reason to be following me around. Gang stalking is something that can be looked up online. There's no official information on it right now. There's nothing coming out of the United States government about it. But that's okay because there was nothing coming out of the United States government about COINTEL PRO and MK Ultra until the programs were ended. And that was in the 1960s and 70s. Now we know that those programs really did exist and they're talked about at length on the official FBI and CIA website. Gang stalking is in that same boat and eventually it will be talked about on official government websites as well. And speaking of websites, I forgot to mention one thing Again, an abundance of police officers, firefighters, EMS drivers, etc., etc., public works people, public employees, government employees are constantly being put in the face of the targeted individual, not for his safety, but to give the gang stalkers around him confidence. If he resists you, if he argues with you, if you assault him and he defends himself against you physically, call the police and we'll get him arrested or killed. So again, speaking of websites, I forgot to mention that your, your website and online activity can get you gang stalked. If federal law enforcement agencies find your website activity to be peculiar or strange, you could be put in a gang stalking as a potential terrorist. Now, I'm an inquisitive person. I have a naturally inquiring mind. If you go to any of my websites, Bible Discourses, Discourses on Philosophy, at Citadel House on Twitter, at Bible Discourses on Twitter, Bible Discourses on Pinterest, EIS Media Group on Twitter, 
If you go to my Facebook page, Emmanuel Isaiah Smith, you will see a virtual library of information that I put together myself because I enjoy it, I learn from it, and it satisfies the curiosity that I have naturally about the world around me, past, present, and future. I have a naturally inquiring mind. I've been to every kind of website that there is. And in the process, some federal law enforcement body looked at it and said, you know what, that's peculiar. We're going to have to keep an eye on this kid, regardless of if he has a criminal record. And we don't need a court order, and we don't need to subpoena him or charge him with any crimes or arrest him. And the reason that they don't need those legal documents is because gang stalking intensified. It was already in existence before 9-11, but it intensified when 9-11 happened and the Patriot Act was passed. The Patriot Act basically says that federal law enforcement and military elements in this country have the right to follow and surveil observe and basically tail any US citizen for any amount of time for any reason without a FISA warrant and without cause yes have a seat? Yes, sir. What's the problem? No, sir. Okay. And this officer just asked me if I had a gun in my backpack. Okay.